Hi, welcome to the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars in Washington, D.C. I'm John Molesky, host of Dialogue. We're on the set of Dialogue. Just concluded a fascinating interview with Pauline Mayer, who is the author of this book, Ratification, The People Debate the Constitution. And a lot has been written about the Constitutional Convention, but no one has done uh, such an expansive piece on this critical year following the convention where this, this proposal becomes the law of the land. Uh, uh, tell us about uh, why you tackle this project now. What made this a possibility now? What, I think nobody did it before because the documentary record is so dispersed and, and so large. Uh, that that it you literally could not do it. It's not one, one contained life. story in a hall in no, Philadelphia. No, you, this you is can't a... go to the Library of Congress and, and come out and write your book. It's just not possible. Right. However, there is a group of editors who have collected a good bit of the documentary record and published it as the documentary record of the, uh, the documentary history of the ratification of the Constitution, and it made it possible to write this book. And contemporary politicians and citizens will, will uh, pontificate about how they understand what the founders intended and they understand the Constitution in its uh, completeness. Uh, you paint a very different picture, something that was different. hotly debated and there was no one-size-fits-all approach. Was no sacred document yet. Yeah. When does it become a sacred document? Well, you start at the end. I say early 1789, maybe occasionally later you get suggestions that it's starting to, you know, get, get a, a new reverential mm -hmm. uh, quality to it. Uh, but in the period I'm writing about, this is a punching bag. Uh, even its defenders say, not that it's perfect, Nothing human could be perfect, but that it's the best we can get under the circumstances. Nobody is 100% happy with it. What do you think uh, people will be most surprised about if they have a cursory knowledge of this period of American history? What do you think is going to jump out at them as not what they expected? I think they'll be surprised at how respectable the arguments of the opposition was. They were, they were in some ways prudent. They mm -hmm. were, what, what, but well, some of them just thought it was better to stay with the Confederation. They said you give powers sparingly, as needed, Luther Martin in, in, in Maryland, uh, because it's much easier to give more power than to take it back. So it's very dangerous to give too much all at once. That wasn't an altogether stupid position, except it's almost impossible to, it was impossible to ratify the Articles. Uh, others just wanted certain changes made, rights protected, ambiguous phrases changed uh, so that they were clear. They wanted amendments, and the Federalists said, no amendments, take it as it is. Was that, a, as George Mason said, it is improper to tell the sovereign people, take this or nothing. And as a sovereign people, we could sort of think maybe we would rather not be told take this or nothing. <laughs> Shouldn't the people be able to, you know, tweak it a little? Yep. Pauline Mayer, thank you. Yeah, Terrific thank you. book. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, if you think you know about the Constitution and the aftermath of the convention, think again. This is the book for you. And if you'd like to hear more of this interview, we did a complete 30-minute version for dialogue. You can visit the Wilson Center's website at www.wilsoncenter.org. And on the top right-hand side of the screen, you'll see a tab for dialogue. Click that, and you can find the complete interview. Thanks.